this is Dodger and you're watching my show. I still only have comic books on my shelf at the office, which is like kind of okay, because it means, well, whenever I'm like exporting something, right, I either play DDR or I just reread Saga. But on the negative side, it means that my shelves are super bare and real boring to look at. So I need to, I need to make some choices about this. Man, I just feel like, I feel like I'm making it so all the kids can't come to Christmas. Oh, somehow that got lukewarm so fast. All right, let's get into news. For our first piece of news, the very first international tournament for Heroes of the Storm has been announced. It will be called The Road to BlizzCon. It's going to have one team from Taiwan, one team from Korea, two teams from Europe in general, um, two teams from China, and then two teams from the Americas, which for some reason includes Australia and New Zealand. There will be regional tournaments starting in May, and the prize pool is 1.2 million, so nothing to sneeze at. Now you might be saying to yourself, but Dodger, I don't understand. Isn't the game still in beta? Yes it is, sirs and madams. I mean, not for much longer, but mm-hmm, yep. It's interesting how many MOBA games go into their tournament seasons before the game has officially released. Like, Dota was doing that. It doesn't make any sense to me. I suppose it just sort of makes sense to eventually start having tournaments, even if the game isn't ready for release because people have already established a meta and there are people who are known as really good players in the community and I guess why not? Why not? The very limited Windows Splatoon beta happened, which we kind of talked about last week. Um, it's been interesting because I'm getting, I'm getting flashes. I'm seeing shades of Little Mac all over the place. What I mean by that is that Splatoon has a weapon that's supposed to kind of take the place of, like say you're playing TF2, it's supposed to be kind of the heavy, the heavy weapon. Um, and it's a giant roller. So you just like roll around, it, it splashes ink everywhere. It's like a one hit kill if it catches up to you. So naturally, of course, the universe is filled with the phrase, Roller OP, Roller OP, please nerf Roller. Now I always find this stuff interesting because in a beta, it's really hard to determine if something is actually overpowered or if people just didn't have enough time to understand how the classes work. Like Little Mac, okay, this is why I was saying shades of Little Mac. They never had to change Little Mac. People were losing their minds, being like, Little Mac is so OP. But after you start to play the game a bit more, you begin to understand what his negatives are, how to take advantage and be able to beat him. Some people are saying, yes, the roller is very strong, but it isn't OP because it stands out like a sore thumb. It's so easy to hit the person who is on the roller, right? But on the other side, it might make sense to make the roller a little bit slower. Perhaps the person is just too fast, or maybe it shouldn't be a one hit kill. These are the sort of things that we're not gonna know until people get more of a chance to actually play it consistently. Because a beta, especially a beta that had very limited windows like Splatoon did, it's not gonna give us accurate data, we don't know. But hey, it sounds like the game is really fun. I was watching Gerard play it actually at the office. I was just lusting over it. I was on a break during one of my streams and I was just like, hey, you playing Splatoon? Oh, it looks really fun. And of course, there's already lots of not safe for work fan art because they're squid people, so put it put it together. Koji Igarashi, our lovely, beautiful creator of Castlevania, has made a Kickstarter for a game called Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Now stop me if you've heard this one. Original creator, a very popular franchise, gets frustrated with Corporation for being out of touch with gamers and decides to make a spiritual successor to their original game. Sound familiar? So basically, Igarashi got really frustrated with Konami, which, wow, everybody's frustrated with Konami lately, that's weird. He kept being told that people just didn't want Castlevania-style games anymore, that they were just not into it. So, he decided to go to Kickstarter and be like, look guys, we need this much money to prove, basically, to, to prove to people that this is a game that you want. Now, that might sound a little underhanded, but, it turned out he had already raised 90% of the money that he needed to make the game. They already had a proof of concept. They had everything that they needed. The only thing that they were missing was proof that people wanted it. So they asked for $500,000 to get the 100% funding that they needed. 
and uh, it's been blown out of the water, as you probably guessed. It's at 2.2 million right now, with how many days left? 26 days left, goodness. It's really interesting to me how crowdfunded stuff has really evolved into the form it's at now. Because before, it was just, hey, I'm just a guy, I'm a dude who wants to do a thing. Do you wanna help me do a thing? And we'd be like, sure, buddy. And then, bigger and bigger corporations and people started to get involved and say, hey, I want money for a thing. And our response, you know, understandably was, do you not have the money to make that thing? Because you, you, I get the feeling you do. So now we've reached this really interesting point where people will come to Kickstarter and say, look, I've done a lot of the work here. I've already got so much of the money. Really what I need right now is to prove to people that you want this and that's it. And then, you know, if I'm able to make the money to have 100% funding, that's fantastic. It'll serve two purposes, but more than anything, I need to be able to show people numbers. I need to be able to go to someone and say, look at how many people are interested in this game who really want this game. And I think to us, that feels a lot more genuine right? There's, there's less to question there. As a Castlevania fan myself, I am delighted. If you would like to check out the Kickstarter, I will put a link in the description and you can go there and uh, get involved. It looks real pretty. It looks like a real pretty game. You would think that while dealing with record unsubscriptions from World of Warcraft that uh, they might be a little bit nervous about banning a bunch of people at once. Turns out Blizzard is sticking to their guns. When you do something wrong, they will ban you. This week, Blizzard banned over 100,000 World of Warcraft accounts for a six month period for using bots in PVP. Now in that information, we can kind of see a little bit of a lax because before Blizzard would have been totally cool with just perma banning all botters, all botters forever, right? But a six month period, it's very different. I feel like people have been playing World of Warcraft for so long that they've gotten kind of relaxed about the use of bots, like, or maybe it just doesn't feel like they're botting really. So in case it isn't clear, any program that automates anything that you do is a bot and violates the terms of use, just in case that wasn't clear. And I mean, people use it for gold farming in PvP, they were farming honor points, like, there are so many different ways that you can use bots in a game like that, and it really does ruin it for everybody else. So if you've been using a bot and you didn't get caught, and you're still in the game, and you didn't get your six month ban, then you're lucky, and maybe rethink some stuff. Or go play Final Fantasy XIV. What, oh my gosh, who said that? Oh my gosh, that's so weird. The new Nintendo Direct talked about E3 plans for Nintendo, specifically that there will be a Nintendo World Championship for the first time in 25 years, what? Nintendo World Championship is really just, I mean, if you go and look at old footage, it's like, oh my gosh, it's just prime beef, it's so good. But um, it's just a big tournament, it's a big Nintendo tournament, and the best part is that in the past, and I hope that they continue to do this, I hope so hard in my little heart, in the past, they would make a game specifically for the World Championship. Like, it would be a game no one's ever played before. I think the first thing that a lot of people were asking is, how do I do it? How do I get involved? I believe on May 30th, they're going to start doing little like qualifier tournaments all over the place at select Best Buy locations. If you get through, you will be able to compete in Los Angeles at E3 at the Nintendo World Championship and it'll be beautiful. I totally want to go. Like I want to be, I want to be out there just like, ah, oh like, okay, one of the big things, like I was saying, they always made a new game for the world championship, right? So like those cartridges are one of the most expensive, like one of the rarest, most valuable Nintendo things that you can get. So in this digital age, is there going to be a thing that's equivalent to like the game cartridge that someone could have and know that it's a one of a kind, like incredible thing to own? Anyway, if you decide to compete, I wish you the best of luck. I'm going to be over here trying to get Sam to do it because I think that would be amaze balls. And as a final bit of news, um, you know, a new Assassin's Creed game. <laughs> it's almost like they got a whole team of people together in a room and they went, how can we make an Assassin's Creed game that Dodger won't hate? You know what? We're gonna put it in London during Sherlock Holmesy times 
and you'll be able to play a lady. All right, cool, we did it, there it is. So Assassin's Creed Syndicate is coming out and it takes place in jolly old London and you can play twins, a boy and a girl. And I assume at the beginning of the game you get to decide who you wanna play, the boy or the girl. Girl is not featured in the trailer at all. She's in the gameplay trailer, but in the trailer that's supposed to look cool, she ain't there, which um, upset my heart. But like, the game looks fun. Like there's like a grappling hook and stuff. I just want to meet Sherlock Holmes in it. If Sherlock Holmes is not in this game, I quit. I quit forever. Oh, <gasps> what if Sherlock Holmes is an assassin? <laughs> but it looks like it's gonna focus more on um, sort of, you know, gang mentality within that time period, like them being in charge of one gang perhaps and going after other ones. And it made me laugh because <laughs> They totally have a scene in the gameplay trailer where they're like commiserating with their little like street urchin pals and I was like, what? what is, why is this always a trope? Why is this always a thing? Anybody who's anybody in jolly old London is gonna have street urchin pals. It's just how it goes. Anyway, if you'd like to watch the cinematic trailer or the gameplay trailer, I will put both in the description. What? Cash money. And that is my show. Thank you so much for watching. If you have a positive or a negative response, feel free to leave it in my comment section. And if you'd like to have coffee with me, you can click wherever I put the annotation and it'll take you to my other channel where coffee time has still not come back. Oh my gosh, I sound like a broken record. Fliff. I'm just gonna pretend like I'm making it rain. Money? Maybe feelings? Here, take my feelings. But anyway, I hope you guys have had a fantastic week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next Sunday. Okay, bye-bye.